Hi, and welcome to the pre-pre-release recap for the Throne of Eldraine PPR, brought to you by Loading Ready Run and Wizards of the Coast. And we're here just to talk about the PPR and the, the set, what little of the set we have seen so far, playing, uh, playing our sealed pools on the, uh, on, uh, the PPR uh, yesterday at time of recording. Uh, I'm Graham from Loading Ready Run, and I'm joined by our PPR guests, Jamie Toffles, Olivia Gobert-Hicks, Vince Chandler, a.k.a. Pleasant Kenobi, and Daniel Holt, who works at Wizards of the Coast. Actually, I know we said, I know I was like in the preamble, I was like, oh, maybe, if, maybe we'll just start talking about food. Uh, I'm actually going to put you on the spot, Daniel. What did you, uh, did you have a lot of direct involvement with this set? Um, so with the set, first day at Wizards, I get to my desk, they're like, hey, you have a meeting in one hour, concept push for archery, which was our code name for Throne of Eldraine, mm -hmm. uh, starts. So I was involved in that uh, three-week concept push that we do for every set. And then one of my job duties is to take all of the, that art and make it into a world guide that we send, then send out to our artists. And then they take that and make all the art for the set. And then that comes back in, uh, our imaging team takes it, puts it in the cards, and then I proof how the crops look, how the foiling process goes, and just make sure everything looks right. So you were in at the ground floor then? Yeah. Uh, when I came in, most of the set was already kind of done. I think they were moving into set design at that point, because it goes uh, exploratory, vision, set design, and then play design. What's the difference for people who don't work at <laughs> oh, Wizards sorry. of the Coast? <laughs> the um, set was done, and they were just starting to design it. Sounds yeah, right, weird. Right. Yeah. Um, no, so uh, exploratory, that's where you go wide but shallow. You try a lot of different things, see what clicks, see what doesn't, kind of sells the flavor or just find the fun. Uh, then you go into vision that goes, okay, we, we found the fun here. How deep can we go on the fun? What all can we do? What is the space we have? And then you start kind of making a card file. That gets passed off to set design. Uh, set design then makes the full set, does some balancing. Uh, they pass off a full set. We do a lot of play days. And then that goes to play design, and then they really tinker and they try it out with standard and other formats and test it. Okay. And so you you came in. I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm trying to um, grasp the process. I think it was somewhere in set design when I came in. Okay. I, so they'd already at that point they'd already settled on sort of the the fairy tale Arthurian legend. Yes. Kind of overall concept. How much your fingerprint is on the set? So how much of like. <laughs> When someone casts a card, they're like, oh, that was Daniel's fault that killed me. Uh, I mean, I, I gave some feedback during playtesting, but with this set, I came in so far along that a lot of my fingerprints are on it. If you don't notice, if you see no mistakes, I think I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that bucket got printed. I don't know. You want to talk about the bucket? Do I want to talk about the bucket? Probably. I mean, I don't like it. It's really. I kept I dying think, to I it, so I mean, it, it is good, but I, you so, know, my I view is tainted the, because I the it bucket ruined the me. Brimstone trebuchet is the artifact creature that's uh, two and a red for a one three with defender reach, taps to deal one damage to each opponent, and then it's one of those one of those tappy defenders that has the Buckets. the untap clause. In this case, it's whenever you cast a knight, you get to untap it. Uh, yeah, Cam had the bucket. Played against yeah. a lot of knights, I feel like. Yeah. yeah and Cam, so. and I'll get Cam went off. Like, literally cast, I think, three knights in one game. And, like, like just ping me for four in one turn. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that I had, so I had, like, flies to kill him, and it has reach, which I didn't realize until my plan was halfway through, like, of turning my creature sideways. Oh, I was today years old when I realized that card had reach. It yeah, sure it does. does. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, because... Oh, I, I don't, a, I, how does it, it not make sense? If it's the just balls of fire. Are, yeah, but it's not exactly precise. How are you going to shoot down a plane and or person on a griffin? With a trebuchet. Carefully. Very. I can confirm there are <laughs> zero planes and yeah, no, no, there's one plane. My, it is my, my point is like they're not like flavor wise. Those uh. those siege machines were not known for their uh, could, anti air well, capabilities at fair. any point in human. But it could Maybe. feasibly remove something from the air. <laughs> Maybe Therefore, it's just really it, tall. <laughs> the other thing is too, if they, you have a lot of buckets and you were to fire a volley, that would make like for but bad it's flying not trebu air space. It's not the buckets. It's the bucket. That is a singular bucket, Cam but if multiple. there are multiple buckets involved, which I believe like you there can were hit, everywhere. So Hylian, right, is a moving slow airship. You can hit that. But a dude, like, riding a griffin or a fairy that's this big, but and, like, that's, flying with a pair of scissors, how you, the hell does that If hit you that? get hit by Hylian, that means it still has reach. Roast it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're throwing out a big net. See? Ooh, Roast baby. it again. No, it's definitely a flaming ball. <laughs> were, were you all scarred by the bucket? I never played against the bucket. So then... I was the first Calm person down. to be bucketed to death by Cameron in this, in this magic career, so I feel privileged. Buckets. 
<laughs> real strong I feelings about I think the cards are pretty fun. I'm looking forward to, like, when I get to draft this, trying to draft multiple buckets and multiple knights so you can really go off. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, that's... Night storming. It really mm -hmm. puts you on a clock. Yeah. yeah you I, have to respect the bucket. I want to have, like, <laughs> two... I want to have, like, two or three trebuchet in, in a knight's deck and just be like, all right, tap these, play my thing. Untap them. Tap them. And again. the arena bots are like, we don't understand how this card can shoot <laughs> flyers. We're gonna pass them all to you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my Six hope. buckets. buckets. <laughs> Do you think with all the food tokens floating around, though, they'll be able to keep up with all the life gain? Mm. I don't know. How did we? That's a good question. Well, how did, what, did, what do we think about food? I, I, I love it. It sounds. I, I think. It. I think people might be underestimating it because it sounds silly that it's like make a food, eat the food, gain some life, <laughs> and it's like okay, sure. But I actually think, in practice, that it's it's really strong. The food's super sweet. I think the problem with food... So sweet and delicious. Yeah. Well, so Compared to buckets, is that so buckets work a lot faster than stacking food. Because you do have to have two mana up to, to eat. Sure. So that part is suboptimal when, but I guess, like, when you're fighting buckets. It's suboptimal. They're not in the same archetype. If we're going to really focus on this bucket thing. Yeah. They're not in the same archetype <laughs> as the bucket, right? But I Certainly. guess it slows the format down. So you've got yeah. a 1-3 with reach. Yeah. The 2-1 flying fairies are terrible. You can gain life on demand, so maybe it's a slow enough format that the buckets can reign supreme. Good. Maybe there's that. I like I, that there's other cards that, that let you use the, the, the food in different ways. For sure. The um, witch. What? Yes, the one you were talking about. Yes, the, the uh, poison uh, apple witch. The baby hand witch. Oh, that's her baby, playtest name was poison baby apple hand witch. Baby hand witch. Uh, <laughs> name enticing in... witch. Poison apple witch was her yeah. playtest name. Uh, um, yeah, she's... Yes, tempting, tempting, tempting witch. Tempting baby witch. hand witch. She's got a bunch of baby hands in her neck. She has. It's creepy as hell. That's why. So, but the okay. sacrifice of food, <laughs> target player loses three life. Yeah. That's money. And oh, sometimes yeah, people don't it's see that really, coming. Well, it's also very flavorful, right? Because she's poisoning yeah, exactly. the food. Exactly. It's but great. Oh, yeah. the During the concept push, I believe it was Anna Steinbauer or Magali, I'm not sure which one, drew um, drew this as a concept. And we're like, that's really creepy. I didn't think I was going to make it in the set. I don't remember putting it in the world guide. And then awesome. it, this thing came out. I'm like, there it is. That's still creepy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Baby very creepy. <laughs> But there's other other archetypes that don't even necessarily sacrifice the foods, right? There's like um in blue you've got a load of cards that care about artifacts being in play. So there's the the bouncy I was gonna say Naga, but I don't think it's a Naga. The the, the six mana thing that I misplayed for five mana. You sure it's not right. That yeah. thing cares. Sure if you've got an artifact, fact. it bounces some uh, an enemy creature. I can't remember the name, sorry guys. Does it bounce it's anything else of the enemy moonlit. creature? Moonlit, yeah. So oh the Merfolk. Is, is it, it Merfolk? It's, it's a Merfolk rogue. Oh yeah, Moonlit. there Moonlit we scavengers. go. <laughs> and then five in blue for a four, I know five. magic. Merfolk rogue enter the battlefield if you control an artifact or enchantment. Return target creature and opponent so, controls to something. So opponent. scavengers are more effective when there's food in play, right? So yeah. food is more of a black green archetype. Blue white is actually artifact and enchantment matter. Well, so they can bleed is... into each other, right? Because animate, sure. an, yeah. animating fairy can turn your food into like yes. four, four. Well, in that is the well. I don't know if it's only in the brawl deck, but the two older ladies, the artificer pair. There, I think it's a six or seven drop, but they on uh, every upkeeper combat they turn uh, an artifact into a four four. I. That might be the brawl. It might be brawl, but I yeah. I know from playing sure. brawl. But it was one of those like, okay, well, if you have a ton of food tokens, yeah, yeah, exactly. run one, run black or green oh, with well, it, and now all of a sudden you have these artifacts. Just... I'm a big fan of like uh, limited formats where like the archetypes exist, right? And yeah. you can build the archetypal decks by getting lucky in your sealed pool or drafting efficiently. Right. But I like it when there's like we talked about this before, emergent stuff mm -hmm. where players can be like, oh. I just happened to build the, the, the blue-green uh, food artifact deck, which isn't a thing that necessarily is part of the main archetype, but you can still do it because the cards synergize with each other. I was about yeah. to so say blue-green like, food may be a thing, because it's kind of a, the ramp strategy, if you know the 2-drop, mm 2-2, -hmm. two -two, uncommon, flying, taps for blue or green. Oh, the adventure one. Oh, the Marley's oh, Pixie. Oh, the, the, the fairy. The little pixie. little pixie. So yeah. I think there's a blue-green ramp thing. Like, if you were to ramp up to the uh, that merfolk we just looked at, and you have an artifact from the food, the green side... Yep. And the the food helps you live to the late game. With Honestly, I think the, the Simic food is really fun because you can get um, Savvy Hunter out as well, yep. mm. who is super awesome. She's fantastic. Um, She's the closest to the, I keep talking about it a lot, the Tyler's Tracker variant for food. Because mm -hmm. right? Tyler's Tracker was the best investigate card of all time, right? Like, like Tyler's <laughs> Tracker is so, it's so good. Not and the then, Raven Inspector? But, and, oh, and yeah. so yeah. she... <laughs> So Savvy Hunter is making food constantly for you. You can start drawing cards with mm -hmm. said food, and then running blue, then you can make them creatures. You can. I. I. I think the. Not what I say. Something. The sultai for this is. I was enjoying because um, I splashed in my black green deck. Splashed blue for Oko, mm -hmm. and I didn't even realize until he was in play, the sort of the the line of play of uh, play him plus two make a food, 
And then on your next turn, if you don't need the life, and you can already handle the creatures your opponent has in play, then you get to still plus him mm -hmm. to just make your food mm -hmm. into an elk. <laughs> You're like, now my food is a 3-3. Three, three. And your planeswalker's on 7 loyalty. And you've got right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when we played that, I was like, uh, uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out whether I, could, I needed to clock you or clock the Oko, because Oko has so many weird lines of play where you can turn your own stuff into things. You could have swapped your... Uh, I had uh, claustrophobia, the sleep, claustrophobia effect. What was it called? Charmed sleep? Charmed yeah, charmed sleep. Yeah. You swapped your charmed creature for one of mine with Oko. I don't know if I should kill <laughs> Oko here, or at least knock him down, or attack you. Because he's like, he's really... Powerful. Yeah, yeah. powerful <laughs> and also, uh, I guess, open to like many lines as opposed to like, you know, he either kills a thing or... Yeah, he's... A, I, he's, a, I he's, have to... <laughs> he's versatile on that front, yeah. I have to admit, I had not read... Read his third ability <laughs> until what we is it actually? I don't even know. It's, it's, the, the, swap, it's the swap one, it's minus oh. five. Uh, exchange control of target artifact or creature you control and target artifact or creature your opponent controls with power three or less. So, okay, sure. Yeah, so you trade so a food for a creature, yeah. You can yeah. be like, Here, I'll, yeah. I'll give you these bananas. Uh. <laughs> give me your but the most important <laughs> thing is that, that that is an activatable ability after he's upticked just once, either mm. ability. So, whether oh, you're turning yeah, your own thing yeah. into an elk or their thing into an elk or making a food. You can downtick in the next following turn because it's minus yep. five. Yeah. Oh, he's way so more busted than I thought. He is generally good. Walk I mean, all walk most walkers, almost all walkers are good and limited, right? Right. But as far as like outside limit That's as well, really this card's pretty good. good. Mm -hmm. but the price that was is actually right one too. Of Yeah, and the price is Three absolutely mana. right. Three mana in the next turn, you can ult it. Well, in Commander, it's better than Beast Within, right? <laughs> because like it's a recurrable thing it's that a can recurrable turn those commanders within. into elks or turn Crucible of Worlds or other annoying permanents into elks and stuff. So. Is there anything yeah. that cares about elk tribal in this set? He did it. <laughs> I, uh, I killed Brian with three elks. I had, they were His my elks, mine. yeah. <laughs> He's like, here's some elks, please kill me. I think, because I, I think it's just Oko and Kenrith's transformation yeah, are the only things that actually make elk, elks, yeah, so. but yeah. There's, There's a lot of motifs in the art, right? There's lots of elks yep. showing up in art yeah. and stuff. Because uh, that's part of the main story, and one of my favorite m m moments was being that table friend at y'all's match, because this, this is a very tell-your-own-story, mm -hmm. go-in-your-own-adventure. Y'all told the actual story of the book. It was, you turned something of his into the elk, he had a vision of the elk, and yeah. then here came Oko, and he fought him. Yeah, so yeah, it was one elk, because, oh, well, I've had the vision backwards, but then there were many elk in my future, it turned out. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the story that happens. He turns them into an elk, and then the twins go and see the vision of the elk. Oh. Then they go after the elk, and then oh. they defeat Oko, huh. which I think you did. Yeah. Yeah, he sure did. I should have defeated Oko. Do they, do they kill Oko with multiple elk? I'm not going to spoil that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Spoilers, spoilers for the novel. I was <laughs> hoping novel. to get the stealing of things from Rel uh, Piper of the Swarm. Oh, and yeah. And I think I got to play it for a whole f two minutes, maybe. You made two rats. So I you, did make you, two rats. You at least got three did they get killed? Of... You never stole anything? Roofed? I didn't. You have to have enough rats. Oh, rats. You got to make three rats. <laughs> The, re Sorry. the removal, the removal in the format's pretty good, though, right? There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot we of were gonna spells. Be friends, and I don't know. Bake them. So, like, when you're when you're playing your bomb rares, like, you're gonna get them removed pretty sharply. Well, the nice thing is just taking them. Sure, but like what I'm saying is the reason you didn't get to play with your bomb rare so much was because everyone else is packing like real heat for killing stuff, right? Well, that and like, everybody, you can see the card and be like, "This is not okay." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rats get menaced. You just keep making rats, like. That's you know, I relate. You, I you drew Robber the Rich around. every game. Okay. I attacked with him every game. I flipped a land every time. Mm -hmm. Never got to steal anything because they just killed it. I'm glad you started talking about a red card because we've definitely been enjoying the Saltai fun, but I wanted to talk to Jamie about the 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 Knights deck because you had to open your pool on camera and that was yeah. spicy. Was a good pool that was too. a ludicrous pool. It was. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel like it just built itself, which is always nice and sealed. Mm -hmm. Because there's always so many options. That's the worst when you open a pool and every color you're like, mm, I could probably play this, but then you don't have a direction. So I was just so happy to have something that was like, do this. And the knights were very strong. You had a certain yeah, dragon yeah. that kept showing I up did. too. Didn't get to do much, I feel like. No. <laughs> <laughs> he just died right away every time. But again, that's removal shot to like a bomby body, right? Like, which is good because it means, I'm saying this, it, it prompts interaction, right? Because you can steal mm. their stuff and turn their things up. There's that really cool moment where you're trying to figure out lines for dealing with the dragon. Can I turn it into an elk? Will that turn the mode off? And then it didn't, but you also have the the, the, the black spell that... Which is something. It's uh, creatures of the chosen Witch? type get minus it's, three. It's minus which three. is Witches something. something. But either way, again, more and more... Vengeance! Vengeance. <laughs> That's it. We were only talking about res, but it was cool because there's loads of interaction back and forth where she had stolen one of your things, you didn't want to leave it on the board. Was, yeah, it's just cool. Yeah. I, I like formats where like, you get to interact with each other as opposed to just like crashing aggro decks into each other. And, stuff. and both times, I uh, was like... I was thinking to myself, okay, 
I know that this deck is m almost entirely knights. I can probably get some pretty good value off this Witch's Vengeance. And both times I had to be like, or I just Dagron. have to kill this yep. dragon because <laughs> I have no other way of dealing with this. Let me do the no tribal flyer. play. Yeah. yeah. I named flyer dragons. for four, and then it does other stuff. That's kind of not fair. It's really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Has other tests. But I mean, it's balanced being a 4 3, right? Because there's, there's quite a few, like, uh, three and four damage spells in the format as well, in red, especially. Oh, yeah. You, you have yeah. three copies of the. Yeah, that's why I called my deck Hit Me Baby one more time. I had three of the deal three. I even tossed one aside in Kathleen's game, and she's like, oh, God, he's getting rid of removal. I'm like, like I got two oh, more. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting rid of. Yeah. Sure. So I guess it's balanced you have a no little bit with that. <laughs> and you, and you, hit, you hit me with the one that it's five to a creature, and then with adamant also three it's to the controller. Good, yeah. Yeah, and you nice. have the, <laughs> really, you have the searing, Uncommon Night in play, right? And searing Barrage? Yes. Is that, yeah. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. That sounds right. It's like Searing Blaze, but a lot bigger. But you'd won, but you'd won harder, because technically there's a trigger that didn't matter, because you got to draw an exile card off of, um, what's the red legendary knight called? Sir Kara? Yeah. Yeah. So you'd won harder, dead. harder than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then Adam got the troll dude, too, or the dwarf noble, that's also Ridiculous. Oh. There's, there's a few of those playing around. You had one. I also had that Oh, one. did you? Okay. Ugh. Remember, you had... Adam's deck is just my deck, but better. <laughs> <laughs> you had the double score didn't you? Just... The what? His Dwarf Noble, you had the double removal spell on the spot. Otherwise, he's going to wreck you. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, he also got the... What is the lady that whenever you draw your second the card... The Scorch Mage. Yeah. yeah. Pyromancer. Just, just yeah. burning Pyromancer. everything I played. Aaron Craig Pyromancer. Whoa. And you're like, it's a zero four. I can I can't deal with this. <laughs> Not like, only are you getting to draw an extra card every turn, you are bolting that and getting a one one fairy. It's just <laughs> no. Okay. On the flip oh, because side of the, of the enchantment. Yeah. yeah. The negotiations. No. Unlikely. Um, unlikely alliance. It's yeah. A, unlikely oh, alliance. It's a, it's a yeah. red blue. It's two mana, right? The yeah. enchantment two mana. Yep. It's like red blue. But the activated ability is six. But if you have all those cr cards that care about a second drawing, yeah, that's, right. that's the very blue I mean, right? is, yeah. when Adam was showing me that when we were looking at each other's decks right after the build, <laughs> it's like, are you going to deck yourself? He's like, I don't know, but if I lose that way, I'll feel okay. It's like everything <laughs> but, was just drawn. Again, though, this, this, this card on the flip side of the dragon discussion of being a 4 3 is slightly better because It'll the one spell doesn't kill it, the, wishes, the witch's thing doesn't kill it. There's no, a lot of spells in this format that don't randomly kill zero four. Yeah. Improbable alliance. Improbable right. alliance. There yeah. he is. I had one. Adam had two. Adam had two of those. I think yeah. I had two. Wow. He oh, it's, drew it's, it's uncommon. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That could be real in, uh -huh. in, in limited. Sure. Yikes. All right. Huge yikes. Huh. And so, uh, I also think it's interesting that uh, back to the knights uh, briefly. That there are knights in every color. There's yes. knights. There's mm -hmm. knights there all over. Five color knights. But the sort of the knight tribal. Synergy is sort of focused in Mardu, mm -hmm. but there's just so many. <laughs> like I, I, mm -hmm. I think when you're drafting, it's not like it, it's not going to be like a set where it's like okay, there's one or maybe two people that are in the knights mm -hmm. deck, and it's only that. I think you'll be able to do because you were Rakdos knights. You didn't even play white in your deck, right? Right. There's yeah. no reason to. It's just solid. And so you could have a Boros deck and a Rakdos deck and someone else playing knights that maybe have one or two cards with knight synergies. Like, I was playing uh, I was playing Black Green, and I had some knights that cared yeah. about other knights, yeah. and that worked and that worked well enough. And it's funny, because the Mardu color is the one that actually got... I mean, every knight's color has equipment that's pretty specific to it, too. But the Mardu colors are the one that got the land mm. that fixes you mm -hmm. for those colors if you're playing a knight or I an equipment. I feel that's very unique for a magic set. I can't think of another magic set I've played where there's randomly a three color land that only fit like one of the archetypes and or tribes. Mm -hmm. That's not a thing that happens very often, right? No. I, I look at so. you because you're Mr. Wizard Man. Right. No. I was just thinking about <laughs> yeah, responsible tournament grounds. It's all I was just thinking fault. about the set in general because the main conflict engine is the quartz versus the wilds. The and wilds, wilds is the non green blue, right? Oh, it's all. It's all colors. Well, true. Yeah, um, they, they both are. It kind of fits yeah. that way. Uh, but in when you think about the courts, you're like, well, most of them are knights or nobles because that's just Arthurian. That's mm -hmm. you know. So of course, there's going to be a lot of knights in the set. Of half the set <laughs> conflict engine is the knights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I just thought it was uh, that it was. That land is so busted for EDH. That land is very very good. <laughs> so good. Busted for EDH. EDH. If you're playing Mardu anything. Yeah. Well, the, you, well can only, for a knight, you can only for use equipment. the Mardu for knights or equipment. Ah, yeah, you could mm. absolutely build around that, especially with like Edgar Markov. It doesn't. You could just focus more on knights than you do vampires. Is Edgar Markov a vampire knight? 
I don't think so. I think he's there just are a lot of vampire. But there are a lot, of, there are a lot of vampire knights. You still have all those Ixalan cards. Mm -hmm. You've got now stuff from this. Yeah. You could absolutely put that to good use. But in standard, Ixalan is rotating with us. True. I don't brew a lot of commander. I, I I want to, but I just don't. I'm just telling you what I know. And it's Sweet. <laughs> I believe you. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was there any? Uh, uh, does anyone have a, a particular uh, play that they made or had played at them that? Uh, Sticks out. Other uh, than the bucket from yesterday. Other than the that other than the stupid trebuchet. seven damage oh, thing. Oh, he is a knight. Is a knight. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Uh, so yes, I thought he might be. I think He's that you could do nice. really well with Marner knights and commander with that knight, land and Edgar Markov at the helm. Thank you. I, I yeah, well played. Oh, look at me go! I did remember something and then <laughs> thought I was wrong. <laughs> I was right. In my game with Adam, time. he hit the stroke of midnight on the midnight clock. Oh, midnight! Oh, then yeah. the turn that he hit twelve, I drew my mirror maid, which, which could have copied his clock. But it was I too late. late. It was too late. I think this clock I is really good. It's way better. Clock. Like people yeah. like in the spoiler season were saying, it's too slow for like limited it's each and stuff. Upkeep. Yeah, it's each yeah. upkeep. And, like again, and again, can, and you can pay three. In commander, the card's going to be absurd. Keeps. It's two rotations from the table, and you're going to draw seven. You and you can also bounce it in response to the trigger. So you have to exile it. Oh yeah. What? Ooh <laughs> boy. You can also just pay. It doesn't tap. You can you can tap itself mm -hmm. to pay for part yep. of its uh -huh. thing. So and blue like having a oh yeah. You sure can. Yeah. This card's really good. I think, and yeah. it was, it was, was good that, for Adam, right? Like Adam did he, got did to. Did he just dumpster you after that? Like, was he like, I got seven cards now? Yeah, and I'm a red deck with two cards. I think, yeah, that's... I think Chat's reaction was, uh, Adam, we hate to inform you, but it looks like you're winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That and what was the the seven damage red oh. spell? Oh, I got, splashed talk about it. That. Never got to play it. Thundering stroke. Yeah, There's I got taken so out. So many of those floating. Around. I got Adam taken out by them, that. I literally was Adam playing. I was playing Jund, right. and then I had two mountains and Thundering Stroke. That was it because I needed mm -hmm. a good. So finisher. I got Adam down to eight in that game, instead. and I was holding my Thundering Stroke. I'm like, yeah. I just have to get one damage, and I win. Yeah, because the yeah, game looked very one-sided because of Midnight Clock. Because Midnight mm -hmm. Clock's obviously like a, 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 a power nine level of threat and stuff. But then when you reveal that, when you just die, and you're like, oh, I was actually one damage off. I was like, oh. wow, this game is a lot closer than uh -huh. it looked. Yeah. And really everyone was confused when Mirror made his, uh, yeah. uh, what was it, the spinning wheel? <laughs> yeah. <'Cause> I, <laughs> I was trying wheel. to get the adamant on this, but it didn't actually matter because I just needed to do all seven to his face. Yeah. I uh, I, I wonder, because I, again, I, I mentioned I was, that my, in my deck tag, I mentioned that my deck build was challenging. I was having a really tough time figuring out what direction to go. And initially I thought it'd be blue-black, and then I didn't know that my blue was very good and really looked more seriously at my green and realized that it was quite strong. And then I was like, well, maybe I just sort of play Saltai. Ended up only splashing for Oko. Yeah. I had the Midnight Clock, and I probably should have splashed for I probably should have had that in there as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's, that it's, was it's in my pack, too. It's a weird artifact, though. Like, the it effect, is. Like, you don't see those sort of effects very often. So it's weird to judge it initially. Well, I knew it was very powerful, but it was also like, is this the right kind enough. of deck for that? Whereas I'm just sort of like mid-range recycling creatures. And the value fixing's bad kind of too, stuff. right? Yeah. So like once you start going heavier on a third, a third color, because there's like there's no fixing in the set, right? Like midnight the, clock itself has yeah. blue, Thorn Acolyte, which I had, and the spinning, and the spinning wheel, wheel, which I had. Okay. Well, one of each. Uh, of there's the it. there's another scarecrow. In which case, but you have to pay two to fix that. There's the scarecrow that taps for two. It's a two-four vigilance. There's a couple of filter effects like this one as well that pulls. Yeah. Did you say the egg already? Doesn't that? And the, uh, yes, the egg does as well. Okay. So there is fixing, but, but like it's not very good. Is I, it? It's like, four awesome. cards. I mean, you have to have I mean, them to I get think, it. I think that's that's by I, design. Right? Yeah, the, the set I, is meant to be. I, it's meant to be color, color, right? It has to be. It 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 can't be that easy to hit adamant on every single right. spell with adamant. Yeah. And so but if there's help, it, actually, huh? that's a very good actually help. help yeah. But I mean, if there's just like the free flowing fixing that we've seen recently with you know a dual land in every pack sort of thing, then that then the adamant. It's just academic. You always have adamant for all the cards well, that you want. There's two different points there. One is that, uh, yeah, we've had sets where, oh, you're going to get a dual land in every pack, which mm -hmm. is a thing that once upon a time never happened in Magic Limit environments, right? So that's been kind of spoiling us. And secondly, even in my two-color deck, I was like, oh, adamant's just going to be a free thing that's always online, right? And then in our game, I was like, I can't adamant things at all. Double spell just adamant. Two of so each I had to make something, yeah. actual like, strategic choices around whether I wanted to adamant a thing or cast two spells and stuff, which I thought was really cool. And the cards went bad when they weren't adamanted, if that's a <laughs> word. But uh, it, it still made me have to question how much value do I want to get out of this card? Do I cast one spell this turn and wait? And yeah, so just I, I like formats that make me have to make decisions that feel like they're, they're, they're valuable and worth it. Yeah. And adamant definitely made me feel like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Well, and the lean is monocolor on this, isn't it? I mean, 
there's so few things that have split or hybrid that I, right. I mean obviously I think you can rewarded play it however you want you can be much more right. yeah it can be much more beneficial to just stick so to one color and I don't reward you for having the monocolor but then all of the archetypes split you into the multiple colors so yeah. it's kind of tempting exactly. and there's, yeah. and there's also bomby cards right like the like the triple pipped uncommons and, oh yes, and then the triple pipped like rares, like the, all the quad yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. The quad pipped, uncommon. quad pipped. Sorry, my Oof. bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I was I was looking at that and I was going, I can't play this. I just I will never be able all to the cast hybrid it uncommons. Yeah, mm -hmm. just four mana. I think the hybrid uncommons yeah. though might bring an element of variance to like sealed pools yeah. because yeah. like that, that that's a that's a that's a four red or four white, right? So mm -hmm. if you're in like the white uh, green deck, if, whichever that's the adventure deck, right? Right. Yeah. You won't necessarily want to play this, but if you're already in the white red deck and you're in your sixth pack and you just to get one of these, you're like, oh, I guess I've locked out a bit more than perhaps the person to my left mm -hmm. in the seal defense. There's yeah. a bit more variance to those cards being included, but they're definitely rewards for being monocolor if you can be. For sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Awesome. Last, last one. What's your so far? What I mean, I I, I don't want to say favorite. What is a uh, card art that you love so Ooh. far? I, uh, I I I was uh, very lucky to get the uh, showcase frame animating fairy. Ooh. Which is very, yes. very pretty. Yeah, you like that one. That and, and the showcase frame one. Murderous Rider, which is also just, I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. Very oh, nice. is one of the best. Look at the little teacup <laughs> man. Little with a little teacup golem. He's got like a cup for a head. Oh, that's fantastic. I hadn't seen that one. It's really, it's really, really pretty. And the yeah, the Murderous Rider looks like looks like Edward Gorey. Ravenna's work on this yeah. is amazing. Jenna did such good art. And it's just that, you know, washed out black and white. Um, I got... I didn't run it, which sucks, but I got uh, Aaron Miller's um, The White Showcase. It is like he did it in like the medieval style. I cannot remember the, for the life of me the name of the card. What did it do? Uh, I can't even remember the name. <laughs> Why would I remember the rules text? No, that's how I win the cards. <laughs> um, but it was one of the ones I got. I got an Emberth Shieldbreaker as well. The oh, the Emberth Shieldbreaker. Is Shieldbreaker is good. It's like so two, good. It's like two colors. Yeah. With the all Three. Yeah, Red, one. black, white. Yeah. And it's money. It looks so good. Outside of oh, showcases, boy. there's the um, I didn't open it unfortunately. Well, I say unfortunately. I won't play it. Minty, but the the is. two mana one two flying creature that stops ETBs and death triggers. Uh, Hushbringer. With, yeah, and it's all like abstract with like a mouth behind it whispering to it, but it's also floating mouths around itself. Hushbringer. Mm -hmm. That are it looks like an Enya album from like the nineties, but in wow, a good way. it really does. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That it's... is uh, and the, the <sighs> lips on the right look like photo real as well, which is always impressive to see from like artists yeah. and stuff like. And her head's exploding into like a cloud of stars. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's some good art. Arden Vale Tactician. Oh, oh yeah, Arden Vale Flyer. Yeah. He went the old medieval style. It mm -hmm. looks so cool. I got it in foil and I almost wanted to it's run so it just pretty. to show it off. It's beautiful. That's really cool. Jamie, anything to leave out to you? I'm always on the lookout for cute cards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, the pug bat one is super cute. Oh, what's, what, what's, <laughs> oh, the... what's her name? It's the. the... <laughs> It's the, the evil step. Oh, the evil step. Oh, yeah. Um, the it's like overbearing wicked, warden. Wicked, wicked step parent. No, it, 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 wicked it step parent was wicked probably just development it's, it name. Probably, but yeah. Is it called it, wicked warden or something? It's like something. It's like something that. warden. It's like I think it's the overbearing warden or I can't remember. Like but yeah, she's yeah, holding. She's black. She's, she's holding her little bat pug. Yeah. And yeah. And there's like there's not Cinderella scrubbing the floors in the background. Ah, I didn't ever see that. I got no. I got caught up by the little pug face thing. Even even mechanically, she um inflicts pain upon the other cards on the side of the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Because you damage something you have to get the card. The flavor of the set is off the charts. Yeah, it's the the it's cohesive is what it is. It's not like there's one line of flavor. It's that all of it works together so well. It's really really good. So I got asked the favorite art question on stream yesterday, oh, yeah. and I just said one of my favorite things is seeing the concepts, you know, come to fruition, mm -hmm. kind of like the Poison Apple Witch, things like mm -hmm. that. But one of my favorites is the four and a black target creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn works. Uh, festive of Funeral. Turn. Festive Funeral, mm -hmm. because that tells the story of the black court so well. Oh. Uh, the queen sends her husbands out to find the, the chalice, I'm and when they come back, forever. if they don't come back, she holds a funeral and a wedding the next day. Or the same day. Uh, <laughs> so such a hard. So on the on the stairs, you will see both black flower petals and white flower petals, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that should that represent that. So story. the big golden thing behind her is the casket of her last yep. husband. <laughs> the flavor text is like, as we mourn the last one, hopefully wow. this new guy will figure it out. Like <laughs> it's awesome. And they, I assume that they're just lining up to be like. I'm, well, and I'm then next. and then smitten swordsman. 
right. is his flavor text is that he wants to find mm -hmm. this for his queen and present that to her. And but I was saying to Dan, once you realize some of this stuff, like I think I think the the criticisms we've seen of like Shrek and other like other t uh, things that is like like when you start to see this stuff, you're like, no, actually, this this world is way more cohesive and flavorful and like oh, yeah. well realized than oh, it looks a bit like a Disney movie. Not like, to those, mention those like, criticisms are a bit a little bit unfair when you start to unpack all the it Shrek all. stuff came after Disney had done it after it came from Grimm's. Like yeah, these are yeah, all sure. stories I mean, that have been. These are like these are unique elements, right? Absolutely, like, like, yeah. I don't know if that right. comes from a There's a lot again. It's the courts versus the wilds. You know, the the Shrek aspect of it is the wilds. <laughs> I guess the fairy tales. Right. There's still all these courts, and each court has their own. You know, their own virtue their own story you know this is the story of persistence i believe was the yeah i think so. the black that. courts yeah. yeah that's pretty cool i just love that to to catch the gingerbread man you must be as fat as the gingerbread man. <laughs> gotta have pace catch me i'm the gingerbread <laughs> gotta exactly. have pace for it oh, that's yeah. probably one of the better arts of the set as well we can't ignore <laughs> gingerbread ginger just jumping out of that building and smashing well, and just, his, just his, that making his, a face of me yeah and just that his gingerbread's mechanics are exactly yes. that like you in order to block gingerbread yep. you must Pay for it's it's really like a the woman. Designs in this, so. Oh yeah, the woman. The, the woman in the window is definitely has definitely not got haste because she's like, I'm not catching him. No. I give up. Well, Just, yeah. So long, Wait, buddy. That extract that, was not vanilla extract after all. That's today's bacon gone. Well, yeah, Throne of Eldraine. <laughs> <laughs> not again. No. Has uh, uh, been terrific for what what little we've had an opportunity to play it, and I cannot wait to start playing more of it. Hopefully, you enjoyed watching the. Pre pre release. If you haven't seen it, the VOD should already be up and uh, there'll be a link in the description. Um, thank you so much for joining us, not just for this, but also for the pre pre release. Yeah. Jamie, thank you so Olivia, much for having Vince, us. Mm -hmm. Daniel. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank it, you. Was, it was a blast. And uh, yeah, please subscribe to our this, our new magic YouTube channel. And, like, uh, comment, and subscribe. If Ring you, that bell. Yeah. <laughs> if you like all of these people, then you can see or will have seen an episode of Tap Tap Concede with them. And you should also follow all of their things, for which there will be links in the description. Yes, please. Um, so <laughs> check that out. That's where they are now, right? Down yeah, below. Down below. I don't know. I've seen down people there. do this. <laughs> that would be in the title. They go. That'd be a very. Our links, be in the our, side links are, our links are in description. Yeah, in description. Right? Before I ring that bell. All that fun stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye.